pod. All right. Hello and welcome, guys. My name is Gediminas. And again, I welcome you to our weekly training call. I appreciate each and every one of you. Just the fact that you are here, that you're investing your time on a Sunday night when you could be drinking beer and watching TV, it tells me a lot about you. It tells me about the person that you are, and it tells me about your, the strength of your dreams and your determination. So just the fact that you're here, I applaud you. You should applaud each other uh, because it's a big thing. Now, today, we, uh, again, we're continuing our webinar cycle about the systems. Uh, so for the last five or so weeks, we've been talking about different systems, like how to get customers in your business system, how to keep customers in your business system, how to get distributors in your business, how to keep distributors in your business, the core rank, like the rank that everything grows around in your business and so on. So if you've missed some of these systems, uh, some of these webinars, do find them on my YouTube channel or in our team uh, Facebook group. Um, this video in particular will be posted by somebody else than me in a Facebook group because I am in Facebook jail till next week. So I can't post anything on groups or like anything or comment anything. Uh, just go to show. And it's duplication because in our team, I think now we've got like three people who already got the ban. <laughs> So it shows that people are duplicating like hell in our business. Uh, not the right things, of course, duplicating, but, but nevertheless duplicating. So um, today we're going to talk about company convention attendance growth or generally attend at, uh, e event attendance growth, right, system. So uh, like we've discussed already in the previous uh, webinars, um, a system is when everybody knows it, everybody does it, and it works. Now, you might not even think that event attendance could have a system. Like, yeah, I know we can have a system for recruiting people, say this, send that, say this, send that, or attracting customers, you know, post this post when people comment, send them a private message, that's a system, right? But how could you have a system for event attendance? You should have a system for everything in your business. So you should have a system for every single process because if there's any process in your business that doesn't have a system, then probably it relies on word of mouth. It relies on you telling somebody and they tell somebody and they tell somebody. Now, if you've been in business for more than two days, you know how well that works in network marketing. It's like what they call Chinese whispers. You say to somebody, you know, go and buy a kilo of sugar. And by the time third person said it, it's like, go and purchase an elephant, you know, and it's just, that's how it happens, you know. So it has to be written down for it to duplicate and for it to not change because you don't want your message to change as it goes into second line in your business, third, fourth, etc. So once your team has grown into tens of thousands of people, you want to show that it's being duplicated. And the only way for it to be duplicated if it's on one sheet of A4 paper. So like we said, assist, it's any idiot can make things more complicated. It takes a genius to simplify things. And your role as a leader in business is to simplify, 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 simplify. That's all you should do. Always be thinking every day, how can I make this easier? How can I make this more simple? How can I make it more understandable for a new person? That's what you should always be thinking as a leader. Because what most leaders do, they do the complete opposite. They overcomplicate. They go, how can I add another thing in here? And how can I add another thing in here? How can I not? Because it looks amazing. You know, it's like, wow, it's so sophisticated. But the more complicated it is, the less people will do it. So again, the filter that you're filtering all of your systems through is if a new person joins your business and they look at your system for recruiting, for getting customers, for promoting events, they look at your system, they should be able to say three things. Looks easy, looks like it's gonna work, and looks like I could do it. So always think, Again, I, I'm guiding you, but I'm not telling you do this or this should be your system because each and every one of you have slightly different business, slightly different ideas, slightly different values. So you should come up with your own system for your own team. However, you should always think, hmm, would a new person think it's easy to do? Would a new person think it would work? Would a new person think, yeah, I can do that? You know what I mean? Because some systems, some things, can sound sexy, 
can sound, wow, it sounds so amazing. Let me present this to my team. But it doesn't, it doesn't duplicate. It doesn't work because people will not even do it, right? So let's talk about convention growth, right? How can you get more people to your events, whether it's a national conference, whether it's a webinar like this, whether it's uh, you know, a little team meeting somewhere, maybe it's a product party or whatever it is. How can you get more people in it? So first of all, why the heck do it? Why would you need to get more people to training events? Well, in network marketing, meetings make money. MMM, meetings make money. The more of your people you can get to training events, you can get to webinars, you can get to presentations, you can get to local uh, you know, parties at somebody's home, whatever it is, the more of your people you can get to training events, the more money you will make and the faster your business will grow. You know, they did the statistic across all the different network marketing companies and they found that bringing one person to like a big convention or like a national event will equal to about $1,000 of earnings for you next year. So if you come to a huge training event on your own, you will learn a lot. If you come with your team, you will earn a lot. So if you come with five people, you can expect to make $5,000 next year over the whole year, right? That's about 500 a month or something like that. If you bring 50 people, you can expect to earn $50,000 next year. If you bring 100 people with you, you can expect to earn 100,000. Now, what's easier to bring three people with you? You know, you go and collect them from the home, you put them in your car, you drive to the training event, not so difficult, right? But you will earn 3,000. But if you can manage to organize 100 people to come, it's a lot more work, it's a lot more hassle, it's a lot more everything, but then your earnings would explode exponentially. Your levels would go higher because people get motivated, people get inspired, people learn things, people get strategies. It just makes your life so much easier, right? So promoting events is huge. And it also does the work for you because if you don't use the events, if you're not bringing your people to events, then guess what? You have to motivate them. You have to inspire them. You have to train them. You have to do everything because they only learn from you then. But if you, if you use events and you bring people to events, then the event does the work for you. Event motivates your people, event inspires your people, event helps your people to make decisions, event trains your people on new skills and ideas on what to do, etc. So it actually makes your life easier. Like they say, if you want to make leadership hard, do everything by yourself. Then leadership will be hard. You'll be going, oh my God, I can't stand this anymore. Like this leadership, oh my God, it's killing me, right? It's because you're doing everything by yourself. If you use tools, an event is a tool, then the tool does a lot of work for you. This is why, for example, next month in November, we've got Success Summit free here in UK. It's a two-day training event with, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 different speakers. They're going to train on social media, on how to grow your team, how to grow your influence. It's huge, right? And if you follow me, you've seen that I've been promoting it, right? Like I'm doing webinars, I'm doing posts, etc. Why am I doing that? Because I'm cheating. I want my life easier. Because I know if my team members go to that two-day event, their minds will be blown. By the end of that two-day event, they're going to go recruiting like crazy. They're going to expand their vision. They're going to set huge goals. And so I know the more people I can get to that event, the more my life will be easier as a leader. Because they will be fired up without me. They will get ideas without me. You know what I mean? So it's just clever for you to use events and to drive your people to events. And the biggest network marketers in the world, that's what they do anyway. Because if you think about it, by yourself, yeah, you can do a little team training for five people, for 10 people, something like that. You know, you can, like we now have 27 people on at the moment, right? You, I can do this, etc. But what when your team grows to 10,000, to 100,000? Can you do everything by yourself? It is impossible. But if you get people to event, hey, how many people can you bring to event? 
as many as you want. <laughs> you want to bring a thousand, bring a thousand. You want to bring ten thousand, bring ten thousand. The company will take care of it. They'll get a venue big enough for your for your team. You know what I mean? So you can do all of that, and you don't have to spend money on huge hotels, etc. It's all taken care of by the company. So you just use the system and you plug people in. Okay, so it's a huge long introduction. So let's have a look at how could you construct the system for your business and. So far, did you get some value already from this, what I've said so far? So drop a comment to me uh, just to see if you're still awake, if I haven't put you to sleep on this uh, Sunday evening. Okay, so number one, um, I can see Bill, Billy's getting some value, Loretta's getting some value, Margarita is, Estella is, awesome, Angela is getting some value, great. So number one, make attendance priority make it mandatory. It shouldn't be that, hey, if you want, you can come to events, but yeah, if you don't feel like it, don't worry about it. That shouldn't be the culture in your business. The culture in your business should be that this is the norm. It's normal for people to go to training events. It's not normal for people to miss training events. You know what I mean? So your whole business culture, your whole training culture should be geared towards getting people to the training events. Like, you know, one of the uh, uh, calls we spoke about onboarding system, about getting new person started in the business. And, and in my or onboarding process, in my first call with the person, one point is next event. And every time I'm speaking to a new person, I will mention the next event. Hey, and by the way, the next training event is this. You need to be there with people, right? Not just you. You need to be there with people, right? It'll be powerful if you go there, but you should be bringing your people. Now, will everybody come? Of course not. But that doesn't mean that I will not promote. I'll promote you to every single new person. So you need to make it a priority. It's a mandatory, right? And one way you do that is by leading by example. You know, as a leader, you shouldn't be the last minute.com person, you know, waiting till the last moment to buy your tickets, to book your hotels, to make your reservations. You know what I mean? Like I book my events usually a year in advance. Like last year I went to go pro recruiting master in Las Vegas and I bought the tickets there and then for the next year. I booked the hotel and the flights for the next year. Why the heck would I do that? Because I'm like you, I chicken out of things. I find excuses why not to do things. So I make, I have what I call a forcing system. The way to force yourself is one, by making commitments. If I book my flight to Las Vegas, now I'm gonna freaking go, you know, because I already paid the money, right? I have to go, I can't go now. Oh, I'm too busy this year. No, it's not happening, right? Second way you make a forcing system is by telling other people. Because if you just tell yourself, so what? You've been letting down yourself all of your life, right? So that's nothing special, right? But when you tell something, somebody else, now it's a bit harder. It's a bit harder to drop it because I told everybody I'll go. You know, how can I not go, right? So for me, as soon as I find out there's a conference, as soon as I find out there's a trading event that I definitely want to go, I'm booking my tickets, I'm booking my hotel, I'm booking my flights, and I'm announcing it. I'm going, hey, team. I've already got my tickets. I've already got my hotel reserved. Don't know about you, but I'm going. Right? So you lead by example, first of all, because do as I say, not as I do, doesn't work in network marketing. It just doesn't work. You know, I've seen so many, you know, clever people in network marketing who would join the business and I'd go, okay, so like which sample kit, which products do you want to get started with? And they go, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to buy any products. I'll just tell them to buy it. I go, oh, wow, you're so smart. You're so clever. Good luck with that, right? It ain't going to work, right? It's just not going to work. So same way with events. I'm not going to go, but I'll tell everybody to go. Good luck with that. It ain't going to work because guess how many times your team members will come to an event and go, but she's not here. How many times do you think that's going to happen before your team member decides, so if my team leader is not coming, that means I don't need to go either, right? Because duplication, right? We all copy what our leaders do, right? 
This is why you'll see top earners, like in our business, Irina, the lady's uh, reached over 50,000 a month income. Do you think she needs to go to the presentation? Do you think she needs to go to the training and take notes? Like she's made enough money, whatever she's doing, it's freaking working if she's built a team of over 50,000 people. But guess what? She's at the front row, every training with her notebook, writing down. Hmm. Wouldn't be a sign of something? Could, is there something you could learn from that? You know what I mean? And then not just one person. I've observed it time and time again. The biggest leaders, the top earners, people who are making the biggest money, for some reason, they at every training event. They at every opportunity to learn. They're always there with their notebook and a pen. They all, why the hell? That's why they are top earners. You know what I mean? So it's just the way it works, right? Next is be willing to deal with the complainers. <laughs> now, if you were under any illusion that organizing your whole team to come to a training event will be easy peasy, uh, then you're delusional, right? The main job for you as a leader will be to deal with, oh, I can't find a babysitter. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to drive there. <laughs> right? That's your role then to make sure to organize it, right? So how could you put few people in one car to go together? Could you organize some people to share a hotel room? Could you organize, you know, somebody to, you know, babysit, etc. You know what I mean? All of these things, because there's only so many excuses you will hear. Usually it's like, oh, you know, I, I'm working that day. So if you start promoting it early enough, you can say to your team, hey guys, the next training event is six months from now, book the annual leave. Get a day off, right? You've got enough notice now to go to your work and go, hey, I need this day off, right? Can be done, right? The next excuse, kids, right? Babysitting. Again, like, I don't know how many events I went to took my kids with me. I don't know how many training events. You know, they grew up with, you know, listening to presentations and trainings. They can do a presentation now, you know, because they've just been to so many, right? Like, I, literally, when my wife, you know, I remember we went to do a business opportunity presentation in Luton. We did the prison day and my wife was very pregnant, right? Like literally nine months, right? We did the presentation. We went home that night. My wife went into labor. We went to the hospital. She gave birth. And next week she was at the presentation with the baby. That's commitment. You know, like a lot of people go, oh, no, 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 I had a baby. I can't do business anymore. Right? She was literally the day after she gave birth, she was in the maternity ward calling our sponsor, asking her to place the order for her. <laughs> right? So if you look for an excuse, you always find one you like. So, you know, kids are going to be a challenge, right? So maybe is there a possibility for somebody at the event, usually there's a hotel, usually somebody books a hotel room. Could the kids be all in one hotel room? And somebody babysits them. Maybe an older kid, you know, 13, 14, 15, looks after other kids. So they are not in the conference hall running around causing havoc and distracting all the moms from actually learning at the training. You know what I mean? So think these things through. Transportation. Can, you know, can people share cars? If there's too many people, can we get a minibus? Can we get a larger coach, etc.? Uh, uh, our leaders, Terry and Daniel, this conference, they just did that. They booked a, a, a bus from London and they brought in a lot of people with them, you know, because a lot of people would have said, oh, trains are too expensive, blah, blah, blah. They organized the transport, very affordable, and brought a bunch of people with them, etc. right? So think about could, what, what are the excuses. You could literally take a piece of paper, go, okay, the next event is in November. What are the excuses my team could give for not going? And write them all down, right? <laughs> the next one, money, right? It's always the... You know, oh, but it costs a hundred pounds. I can't afford a hundred pounds. If you can't afford to go to that training event, then you can't afford not to go to that training event. So, like, I literally, when I'm speaking to a team member, I use the excuse they're using not to go as a reason why they have to go. So, if I'm speaking to a team member and they go, Oh, I can't afford to go to the training event, I go, Well, that's exactly why you have to go because you can't afford to go to that training event. How on earth are you going to learn to make that money? If you can't even go to that training event, you know what I mean? You have to get the money and you have to go to that training event because otherwise you will never be able to afford to go to that training event. You can't afford not to go there, right? Oh, but it's a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds. Wow. So that means if you sold five packs of Slim Extreme, making 20 pounds per pack, that would be a hundred pounds, wouldn't it? 
could you find five fat people <laughs> right and sell them a pack of slim extreme itch right i think you could right let's get to it right so always think how can i solve the problem for my team member for them to be able to go right it's a big part of you promoting events you know because if, if you think that you are promoting training and you are maximizing your event attendance by going on your facebook group and saying hey guys there's an event in six months that's it i did my job i've announced everybody saw the post that's it it's up to them now again it just ain't gonna work like that you're not gonna have many people attending your events right so that's next next thing case studies give people case studies of how the events have changed other people's lives give people stories of how it transformed your life going through the event give people an idea of what sort of impact these events do because events do have the biggest impact like i've been in nine, for nine years in network marketing and there's no other thing or tool or anything else like events in terms of causing people to make big decisions shifting their mindset firing them up you know like a, events is where the big decisions happen nine times out of ten when i heard somebody say to me that's it getting mean i decided to go all the way to the top i decided to go full time in this business i decided to retire my husband i decided to do all of these things guess when it happened at or after an event that's when it happens because that's when people shift because very often people just listening to you it's not powerful enough you know for my guys listening to me is not special it's like they hear me all the time they hear me every day it's not a big deal but when they go to that training event, even if they hear the same thing, they go, oh, did you hear what she said? Oh my God, she said we need to use products every day. I go, no shit, Sherlock, like what I've been saying for the last six months, right? But they don't hear you, but they will hear the speaker at the conference. They will hear the, the trainer there, you know what I mean? So sometimes you can't be a prophet in your own town. Your own people sometimes are least likely to listen to you. So put them in front of other people. Put them in front of influential people. I don't know how many times I've seen it happen in my team where I've, I've trained on something many times and they don't hear me, but they hear the same thing for, from somebody else. They come to me saying, hey, have you heard? What a genius idea. And I go, yes, what a genius. First, I used to get annoyed with that. You know, I used to go like, I told you that already. What do you mean? You know, now I just roll with it. I just go, yeah, wow, what a new concept. Let's do it. Let's start doing it, right? Yes, absolutely, you know. So, so you, again, you want to share the case studies. Jenny went last year to the training. Look what happened to her business. Peter, he came to the conference the year before. Look what happened to this business. It's give them case studies of people who had the results because of that training event, because of that presentation, because of that meeting, right? And then, and a lot of these events, like especially like Success Summit 2, you can literally go on that website and, and, and scroll down and you'll see testimonials of other people. You'll see other people saying, oh my gosh, I came last year and my income has doubled because of it. Screenshot, share with the team. Screenshot, show it to a team member, right? Sell it to them. Sell it like there's nothing else like it, right? Like it's the best thing in the world. Next one is 10 pack. 10 pack of tickets. And that's powerful because it works on two levels. What, what, like for example, we went to GoPro last year in Las Vegas and I bought 10 tickets for this year's GoPro. Now, one thing that that does, it commits you. Now, now I have to promote it because if I don't promote it enough to my team, I'm gonna have 10 empty seats. So I can lay on them, I can do whatever I want, I'll have a lot of space, right? Or I need to sell them to my team members, right? No. Because you buy them in advance as a 10 pack, you usually get a lower price. So same way for Success Summit. For example, Success Summit is in November. And it, now if you go to the website, the ticket is 167 pounds. But because we bought the tickets a year ago, we bought them at 100 pounds a ticket, which means we have saved our team members 60 quid per ticket, right? And I know some of you are already coming to the training, right? Because you booked your tickets, right? Which is awesome, right? I applaud you and I'm really proud of you. So. The reality is that this way, one, you commit yourself then, because if you bought the 10 pack of tickets, now you have to promote. So you know that I'm not coming on my own next year. I'm coming with 10 people with me next year. Number two, 
it saves money to your team members and it shows to your team members that you're committed. Because your team members go, oh my gosh, she just spent a thousand pounds of her money or she just spent you know, 500 pounds of her money to buy these tickets, I need to go. If my leader commits so much, I have to go. You know what I mean? So again, it encourages people. So the 10 packs are very powerful. And then once you have leaders in your team, you can encourage your leaders to buy 10 packs. You say, hey, buy the 10 tickets for next year's event. And then you will promote and you'll bring more people with you, you know? So it's important. Next thing is prepare your teams. So you need to prepare your teams for these events, right? Because it's not just going there, you know, and I'll just sit and listen like in the classroom, you know? No, you are now a business owner. You are going there to grow and to make more money. So take a notebook, take a pen, you know, take a phone, you know, and, and, and take photographs. You know what I mean? That you have to mentally prepare them that this is work. You're not going there to party. You're not going there to, to, to you know, yeah, you will enjoy yourself and have fun, etc. cetera, but, but this is work. You're going there in order to grow your business and increase your income, right? This is why we're going there. So you need to have a notebook. You need to have a pen. You need to be taking as many notes as possible, and you should be taking those notes as if you're going to teach somebody, right? Not just some scribbles, not just like random words, right? You need to take notes like you're going to teach somebody that right? This is what I do, guys. When I, when I go to training events, this is what I do, right? I don't know if you can see it very clearly. My notes are not just notes for me. I straight away take my notes as if I'm going to teach somebody. And guess what I do? I then teach somebody, right? So, but you go, oh my God, but I don't have getting in as, you know, 30 people in my team or 50 people in my team or 100 people. It doesn't matter. Even if you have one, even if you don't have a single team member, you should take notes like you're gonna teach somebody. Because if you don't expect to teach anybody, then you'll never have a team member, you know what I mean? So you should already be preparing like you have a team member, even if you don't have. But if you have one team member, fine. Go to the training event, take the notes, you come back from the training event, you call your team member and you go, Jenny, when we can meet for a cup of coffee, I need to go my, through my notes with you. And you sit down with your team member and you go through everything you've learned. Why would you do that? Number one is gonna train your team member, which is cool, but that's not why you do it. In order for you to understand something and to learn something fully, you need to teach it. Because there's one thing just listening it, and you go, mm, yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense, yeah. But there's another thing when you have to verbalize it, when you have to explain it to somebody, then you really need to understand it. So even these webinars, you know, I see some of you are taking notes and some of you just looking pretty. Right? I'd rather you take notes than look pretty, right? Because it's important. Just the exercise of writing these ideas down, writing these thoughts down, will burn them into the grooves in your mind. Yes, I see Linda from Trinidad and Tobago raising her notebook, right? She's a student, right? She's a student. Very good. Okay, next. Sell the tickets to the next event at the present event if you can. Yes, I can see Jenna as well lifting her notebook, right? So, Again, if you have an opportunity, get people to buy the tickets or sell the tickets to the next event at that event, right? Now, there's this, this thing that uh, Eric Warren said, and it, and it really made a big impression on me. And it said, if I hated people, I would let them stay home and be unsuccessful. So if you're not bringing your team members to the training, you don't love them. You don't like them. You don't want them to succeed. You don't want them to progress. You just, you just, you don't want to help them. You're selfish. Now I know you were talking about, they, they gave me all the excuses. Hey, there's somebody selling and somebody buying in every situation. So you either sell them how valuable this training is going to be and why they need to be there or they sell you their excuses why they can't go. In either case, somebody's buying. So either they are buying why they need to go to the training event, or you are buying their excuses why they can't be at the training event. One or the other, right? So, so think about that also. Whenever you're feeling like dropping your hands down and just saying, oh, whatever, you know, I'm just going to leave this person, remind yourself, hey, I don't love them enough, because if I love them, I would make sure that they become successful. 
Because think about, I'll give you an example. Maybe it's not the perfect example, but a lot of you have children. And your children probably have learned to walk at some point. Imagine if your child, and usually when children learn to walk, what do they do? They fall down a lot. <laughs> they bump their heads and like things that are just horrible, right? It's, it's hard to watch. It's painful to watch, right? But you just go, ah, sod it. You know, I think walking is not for you. I'll just carry you around. You know, just forget about it, right? Do you do that? No. You'll do whatever it takes to get this kid walking. You know, you'll go, oh, come, come to mommy, come to mommy, come to mommy. Yes, you did it, right? You'll do whatever you can to get this kid to walk, right? Because that's what's expected, right? Like nobody is just crawling for the rest of their life because they couldn't hack, couldn't hack walking, right? No, everybody learns to walk, right? Well, that's the same thing with your team member and going to the events. It's like that walking. If, if you're not getting them to the training event, you didn't get them walking. You allow them to crawl for the rest of their bloody life. You want to do that? Do that. But that's, that's selfish. That's selfish, right? Okay. Put out all the stops. So when it comes to promoting, you need to put out all the stops. You know? So you need to be in, announcing it everywhere you can and repeat, 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 repeat. Just announcing once is not good enough. Because if you think that people saw it, they don't. So your groups, your social media, etc. most people imagine it, it's like a, standing army with like who 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 fiona put a new post okay everybody read it everybody read it okay let's wait for the next post that fiona puts in oh look look another post she put oh everybody saw it everybody okay let's wait that's not how it happens that's not your social media your social media is like a moving parade it's like a moving parade so you put something up there today like hey guys i started in my home based business right and that parade have moved on tomorrow there's new people now you think, you, I can't put the same post again, like everybody saw it already. The people who saw it already are gone, right? Somebody else will see it today. Same in your team groups. You put an announcement today and you think, well, the whole team has saw it. Yeah, right. Some of them saw it, right? Most of them have it. So you put the same post tomorrow, you got new people. Oh, wow, there's a train. You put it the day after, again, new people see it, right? So it's like a moving parade. So you need to keep, at, that's why look at the big brands like Coca-Cola or Amazon or eBay. They're bombarding and bombarding and bombarding and bombarding. Why? Because they know that not everybody will see that ad at five o'clock on TV. Not everybody will see that ad at 10 a.m. in the morning. So they'll put the same ad all through the day, hoping to catch different people. That's what you need to be doing. You need to be announcing. You need to be inviting, right? So poses, people who are not serious about the business, they just announce. They just go, hey guys, there's gonna be an event. Okay, that's it, I've done my job. Amateurs invite. So amateurs will go, hey Jenny, there's a training event, please come, send. Hey Fiona, there's a training event, send. Hey Chantal, there's a training event, send. Right? That's what amateurs will do. But what professionals do, they promote. So they will get on the phone with that person and go, hey Sarah, I don't know if you've seen, there's a training event coming in and let me tell you what you're going to get at that training event. This is why you have to be there. And they'll go through that list of all the reasons why you should be there, of everything you're going to learn, of everything you're going to see, of all the leaders that are going to be there. They will make it so compelling, it will be like the Godfather said, an offer you can't resist, right? So it's going to be like that, that you, uh, you'll just go, it doesn't make sense not to go. It would be insane to miss this training event. So if you're truly serious about getting your people to events, before the event, you need to get on the phone and literally speak to every single person in your downline. Now, for some of you, you've got like three people, so you're going, <laughs> so what? Easy, easy peasy, right? For some of you, you've got 100 people. Some of you got 500 people. Some of you got 1,000 people. Guess what? If you're serious about it, get on the phone and speak to every single person. You cannot imagine how much the event attendance will increase. And I'll give you a, 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 a secret weapon. When you call your team members, you will be inclined to ask them this question. You'll be inclined to say, well, Linda, so are you coming? Are you coming? No. Right? No, that's not the question you want to ask. When you call your team member, you need to ask them this. How can we get you there? Linda, 
how can we get you there? Neringa, how can we get you there? Emma, how can we get you to this event? What do we need to do? What do we need to move, shake, buy, sell, borrow, steal, whatever, right? How can we get you to that event? What can be done? How can I get you to that event? Because that starts the thinking process. Because if you just go, are you coming? What's the easiest answer? No, no, I can't. But how can we get you there? You are giving instruction to their mind. You're giving instruction to the subconscious mind. Now they have to give you an answer. How can we get you there? Well, I guess I could get a babysitter. Great, let's do that. Well, I guess I could take a day off. Awesome, let's do that. You know what I mean? So how can we get you there? What can we do to get you to that training event? Right? Not like, hey, are you coming? They are coming. <laughs> they are coming. It's already decided. It's just how. How can we get you to that training event? What can we do? Oh, I have to bring my daughter with me. Great, bring it. Bring it. No problem. Do that. Right? So how can we get them there? Okay. Then it's the recognition. So the people who make a decision to go to that event, then you have to go ballistic and recognizing them. Congratulations to Maybell. She bought her tickets. She's got her hotels reserved. She's coming to the training. I'm super proud of you. It's amazing. You are investing in yourself. You'll see how much you're going to learn. you see how your life is going to change. It's, you make a huge deal out of that. Why? Because recognition or attention is powerful. Babies cry for it and grown men die for it, for that recognition. So other people hearing that, they will want to book the ticket for the training event just to get the recognition that Mabel got. You know what I mean? Just to be put on a spotlight and said, hey, wow, this person is amazing, right? So use that. Don't just miss out because it's a tool. You can use it, right? Also inclusion. You know, you might want to have a special group, a special maybe Facebook group where you're going to give some special trainings only to people who are coming maybe there's going to be a prize draw only for those who have bought the tickets maybe there's going to be a special speaker that you're going to get to talk and train but only for people who are in the group and the only way to get in a group is make your commitment to come to the event you know what i mean now it's a value it's extra value so now when you're calling your team and you go hey you this is what you're going to learn at the event and all that, that, that. But before the event, I'm going to give you so much value, it's going to pay for that ticket before you even go to the event. This event is 100 pounds. I'm going to create a separate group, and I'm going to do some high-level advanced trainings for people in that group. I promise to deliver more value than what you will get at that training event even before the event happens, just in that Facebook group. But you can't get into that Facebook group unless you buy your ticket. But now there is value. Now you're not just telling them what to do because like I used to be the worst employee in the world. Like I truly believe that my bosses probably hated guts of me, right? Because I used to be the person who questions everything. Like I used to work as a security guard and they go, well, what you need to do is walk around this building seven times a night. And I go, why the hell? Like, like one time is enough. Like, why do we need to do that? You know, you have to crawl under that lorry, right? Why do I need to crawl under that load? It doesn't make sense, right? So I always used to challenge my managers and my supervisors, and they would have to explain why do I need to do something, right? So in business, I have the same attitude. I, I, I don't just tell something to my team members, go, hey, you have to do that. I tell them why. So same with the events. You can't just tell people, you have to be at this training event, right? You need to tell them why. Sell it to them so that they want to be at the training event, not just because you told them, right? Now they see the value in it. And again, it's like any excuse, any objection you experience in your business is, is where the value is missing. If your customer says, oh, it's too expensive, that means you haven't built enough value. If your team member says, oh, it's too expensive to go to that training event, it means you haven't built enough value. Because if I told you, hey, I've got a Bentley on my driveway, and I'm going to sell it for a thousand pounds. Now you know you can sell that car tomorrow for a hundred thousand pounds. Guess what? Even if you don't have a thousand pounds in your account, you're going to get it in like five minutes. You're going to get on the ball. Oh my God! I need to borrow quickly a thousand pounds from somewhere because I can get this because it's value. Because you know you're getting hundred times the value of your money. 
you're going to come up with a grant like there's no pro. Like if I asked you right now, hey, do you have a spare thousand pounds? Most of you would say, no, I don't have a spare thousand pounds. If I told you you can buy a Bentley for a thousand pounds and sell it tomorrow for a hundred grand, all of a sudden, all of you would come up with a thousand pounds by the end of tonight. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. You would find a way to get the thousand pounds, right? Why? Because the value is there. So if, if your team member is not going to a training, if your team member is not buying the sample kit, if your team member is not using the products, it's not because of all the excuses they're telling you, it's because you haven't built enough value in that. Because if you've built enough value, they'd come up with the money, they'd come up with everything they need because they see the value. You know, you know what I mean? Okay, so, so make a list of all the reasons why somebody should go to the training event. And then share it. You know, so when you get on a call, you're not going, uh, 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 uh. You already got a list in front of you. And let me tell you why you should be at that training event. This is what's going to happen. And that's what's going to you learn. And these are the people you're going to meet. And that's what happened last year. You've got a list to go by. So you've practiced. You know what you're doing. Like our lovely Jenny today, she went on a Facebook Live, right? And she practiced it in her head a hundred times before she went. She didn't just go, well, let me... Let, let me just, just fake it until you make it. Let me just like blag my way through it. No, she has rehearsed it in your, her head many times before she went. And guess what? She did a freaking awesome Facebook Live. It was on point. She shared great information. She had a great posture, great self-confidence, didn't talk nonsense, didn't, you know, ramble on about. She just went straight to the point, right? And did all, everything she had to do, right? Why? Because she's practiced, right? Simple things. But so many people think that they are just geniuses. They don't need to practice. They don't need to re rehearse. I can just get on the call. I just can turn up to the training and I'll deliver whatever I feel like it. And that's when they flop. And that's when they have bad experience because they didn't respect themselves enough or their audience or their listener because they didn't prepare, right? I, and I know I'm bombarding you with a lot of information today, guys, but, but it's important. You know, it's important for you to wrap your brain around those things. Okay, so I'm just seeing if I haven't missed anything. No, I haven't missed anything. So there's a bunch of ideas now. Does that mean all of this has to be incorporated in your event promotion system? No, it could be just one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, right? So maybe there's a special Facebook group. Maybe there's a, you know, I don't know, something. Think, you know, what, what could I include in my system for promoting events? So then this way, when, when a new team member joins and they start building a team, you can go, here's our A4 piece of paper. And that's, by the way, is your homework, right? To make your system on one sheet of A4 paper for promoting events. So you use this system, you use this checklist, but when somebody becomes a leader in your business by growing their team, you can go, hey, here's our event promotion system. Here's our A4 sheet. Take this, do the steps with, the new, with, with your team members. This is how you promote. You know right? And that's what you do. You just, you just use that system, right? Okay, guys, so I hope you got some value from this. I hope you've learned something. I hope this was useful for you. Nice to see so many of you here on a Sunday night. I appreciate the 46 minutes that you have spent with me. Uh, and um, as always, we'll see you guys next week. Next week, we're going to talk about, oh, one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Next week, we're going to talk about personal development system personal development system. Now, again, you might go, oh my God, I have to have a system for personal development. Yes, you do. And I will show you what type of system and how to do that. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for jumping on. I'll see you guys next week. Bye for now.